thank the Almighty God for giving us good health. This is New Life Program coming to you from Adventist World Radio, the Voice of Hope. I'm your presenter, Tileno Diang. In today's program, we have a lot of great items lined up for you. Betty Anyago will be opening the floor for us when she will be telling us on attitude adjustment in marriage. Then Pastor Obed Soire will also be joining us during the Bible segment to enlighten us on a topic known as trouble. Keep it locked to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. This is the Voice of Hope coming to you from Adventist World Radio. Let us now welcome Betty Anyago to talk to us in the Family Life segment about the attitude adjustment in marriage. Be educated. Which one of us doesn't need an attitude adjustment in some area on our outlook on life, especially when it comes to our marriage? It's so easy to forget that which we are supposed to do and substitute it for that which we want to do instead. Sometimes both go hand in hand, and other times it doesn't. When we took our marriage vows, we entered into a partnership deal with our spouse and with God. And sometimes in partnership, we have to make sacrifices for the betterment of all concerned, not just our personal comfort. Isn't that what Jesus did for us and what we are asked to do as well? We are told in the Bible, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. Philippians 2, 4-7 So what about you? Do you need a new attitude when it comes to how you approach your married partner? Attitudes can make us or break us. If you have been around someone with a bad attitude, 
you will notice that you feel like life is slowly being drained from you. On the other hand, if you are surrounded with those who have a positive attitude, it is like a breath of fresh air. You will leave their presence feeling invigorated. And isn't that true in every aspect of life, including marriage? Many of you will say, but what about my husband or wife? What good does it do if I make an attitude adjustment and he or she doesn't? My answer, what do you think Jesus would say to your question? He'd probably tell you that you're accountable for your part of the equation. You are to do your part faithfully, even if no one else but God notices or responds as they should. For the rest of this message, we are going to share some helpful thoughts Susie made on attitudes in her work, Devotions for Dieters. Susie's thoughts apply to the Christian life in general, but we are adding insights that apply to marriage as well. We pray they will minister to you. Susie wrote, Because attitudes are so important, I came up with an acronym for the word attitude to help us in adjusting our own attitudes. A is for acknowledging God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. When you can't trust your spouse or perhaps trust your own perspective towards things that have occurred, that is when it is especially important to lean upon the Lord. He has your best interest at heart and will direct you as you trust his love for you. T is for trusting God to help you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5 As you do not know the path of the wind or how the body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. Ecclesiastes 11, 5 God works in ways beyond our sight and understanding. Persevere in trusting that God loves you and will redeem that which seems hopeless. With God, nothing is hopeless. T is for training yourself to be godly. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. First Timothy 4, 7 Also, don't look to the modern philosophy of love and marriage. It can be a quick road to the divorce courts, as is evidenced by the soaring divorce rates in the church. The principles for a good marriage are all contained within the Bible. Read it. I is for interrupting ungodly thoughts. We demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. 2 Corinthians 10.5 Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Philippians 4, 8-9 a great lesson the Lord taught me is not to let my imagination and negative thoughts about my spouse take over because it causes all kinds of trouble. When I find myself going down that path, I ask God to show me what I should focus on. It takes discipline to retrain my mind from gravitating towards the negative, but eventually with perseverance, it works and our marriage benefits greatly. I recommend you try it. T is for turning your thoughts heavenward. Since you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Colossians 3, 1-2 When you spend time looking at what you don't have, you lose sight of what you do have and minimize God's blessings. Even small blessings can be viewed as seeds to water. God will do the growing as you strive to live His way. You is for unloading your burdens before the Lord. 
Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Psalms 55:22. Stop yourself when you find you are falling into the trap of doing too much horizontal talking or yelling. Instead, discipline yourself to do more vertical talking to God in prayer, asking for his wisdom. And then follow his leading. A word aptly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. Proverbs 25:11. D is for daily reading and meditating on the word. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seats of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law he meditates day and night. Psalms 1, 1 to 2. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Psalm 119, 97 to 98. Are you involved in stinking thinking? Don't neglect reading your Bible. Your married life will benefit when you realign your thoughts with God's. E is for extolling the Lord. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Psalms 34 verse 1. When your attitude is filled with gratitude, there isn't as much room for poisonous thoughts to take control. God will give you a fresh perspective on whatever you are facing as you practice the power of praise. By acknowledging God, we can view any interruption or crisis with a sense of calm rather than panic. Acknowledging the Lord can make it much easier to trust Him, even when faced with things which you do not understand. You may find it beneficial to copy and post the above points as a daily reminder to make the proper adjustments when your attitude is out of alignment. We pray they will help. Thank you for staying put to Adventist World Radio, The Voice of Hope. I'm your host, Tileno Diambo. We would like to hear your views, comments, and suggestions concerning this program. Do so by writing to the producer, Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi at eau.adventist.org.
I hope that you are enjoying today's New Life program coming to you from Adventist World Radio, The Voice of Hope, with me, Tileno Diambo. Pastor Obed Soire now joins us with the topic, Trouble. Stay tuned. Thank you so much, listener, for joining us. We want to thank you so much for making it a point to be a part of our program today, and we hope that you will receive a blessing. I'm your host for today, Pastor Obed Soire. We want to talk to you about trouble, and I want to read a Bible verse here that I would like to share with you. But before we do so, can we bow our heads together as we pray? Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for Jesus Christ and for what he means to us. We ask that you bless us as we share from your word and give us encouragement in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 46, verse 1, that God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Now listen to those words carefully. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Now, for most people, problems or trouble represents or symbolizes the absence of God's blessings out of their lives. They feel that they are, they've been neglected by God. They feel that um, God does not care about them. And they feel as though they're just going through this life without his blessings. But I'm here to tell you this morning that the Bible is clear and it's saying that God is a present help in trouble. You know what that really means? At least what that means to me and you today is that God is present in trouble. So if you're looking for God, if you're wondering where God can be found, I'm sure God can be found in so many places. He can be found in so many situations. But the fact is that the Bible says this morning that one of those places, the sure place you can find God, is in trouble. You might tell me, hey, oh, pastor, that's, that sounds a bit out of touch and it's, it's not really what we find in the Bible. Remember the three Hebrew boys uh, in the book of Daniel, uh, I believe it was chapter 3, where it talks about the three Hebrew boys that could not bow their heads to worship the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had put up and they were finally thrown into a fiery furnace and God responded and came to their help that the king himself, as he was watching the three Hebrew boys being thrown into the fire, he saw a fourth person in the fire with the boys and he went and said, there is someone in there that looks like a son of a gods. Now, you and I know that Jesus Christ was the one that was in the fiery furnace with the three Hebrew boys. So here's the thing, my friend, dear listener. Are you in any financial trouble right now? Would you believe it if I tell you right now that Jesus is with you in that trouble? Are you in any health problems right now? Would you believe it if I tell you that Jesus is with you through that problem? If you're in a marital issue, your marriage is not what it ought to be, would you like to believe with me that Jesus Christ is very much with you in that situation? You see, for most of us, we associate lack of problems to being with God's favor. But the fact is that uh, God sometimes allows trouble to come, that we may begin to understand him in a new light. I'm not saying it's fun. I'm not saying that problems are easy to deal with. But the fact is that our eyes and our sensibilities are heightened for the presence of God when we are in trouble. In fact, people are most receptive to Jesus Christ when they're sick in hospital or when they're in prisons, uh, when they're in financial difficulties, when they've come to the end of the road. And that is when they begin to realize how important God is 
in their lives. There's a songwriter. I want to end with this. They wrote a song. His name is Andrew Crouch. He wrote a song. And on one of the verses of that song, he says this. He says that I thank God for the mountains and I thank him for the valleys. I thank him for the storms he's brought me through. For if I've never had a problem, I would never know that he can solve them. And I'll never know what faith in God's word can do. So my prayer for you today is whatever problem you're finding yourself in, don't look at the problem. Look at the present help that is in your problem. And that is Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. My prayer is that you find him and receive him in your heart today. God bless you. We have come to the end of today's edition. If you didn't like it, tell us what to do to improve our next shows. Write to the producer, Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi at eau.adventist.org. From the entire production team, we say thank you and be blessed. I have been your host, Tileno Diambo.